So we waited a whole year for the weather to improve. Uh, and we're spending that day in a greenhouse wearing a black robe, so uh, it's a good start. I've also been informed that if anybody does pass out, we've got permission to chuck them in the, uh, the Chateau Lake. Um, so if that does happen. I also should say before I start, I'm really enjoying the, the Fonty group chat. Um, <laughs> and if you haven't checked, I encourage you to, to have a look now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dean Veloso, Dean Stavile, friends, faculty, staff, esteemed guests, and most importantly, the extraordinary, the incomparable, the indescribable class of 24J. We were, uh, we were fortunate to have our guest speaker, Sebastian Missoff, here from Google today. He's had to run off. Uh, I had a whole section of Google jokes prepared, but given that many of us are still in the recruiting process with Google, I've been asked to hold these back. And Sebastian, if you're watching this online later, I hope you realize you've got away lightly and that you will look kindly on that uh, when reviewing any applications in the coming weeks. There are <laughs> He's still here, apparently. <laughs> He's got the message. There are also several alumni here today and some alumni parents. And for them, this is a particularly proud day. You can tell who they are because they look particularly smug. Keep reminding you that in their day, they worked a lot harder, didn't travel so much, and all lived in chateaus. And on an entirely separate note, the university have asked me to remind you that there is a donation box at the back and that you'll be shaken down for any loose change on the way out. As current students, we've been offered the standard five-day grace period to find employment before the donation requests start. Now, I come from the UK and I'm the, the fourth out of the last six speakers to be from the UK. And you may have heard an overarching narrative of decline in Britain. There's, uh, it's a country that's lost its global prominence, suffered Brexit, multiple leaders, but we're holding on to this speech as the final bastion <laughs> of British power. And this is uh, an exciting year. There's been several changes at the university. Uh, INSEAD has recently become ranked number one amongst MBAs for sustainability, which I think deserves a round of applause. So for those of you joining online, well done. Uh, for those of you that have flown from every corner of the earth, I hope you've bought your carbon offsets. Uh, and it's also an exciting year because this will be the inaugural ChatGPT uh, INSEAD MBA. But it's a dynamic space, and we're hoping, Sebastian, that, the, that Google Gemini will take over doing INSEAD homework going forwards. <laughs> now, we've all been through an extraordinary year, and there have been some breathtaking highs and some pretty tough lows. But we are fortunate to have been supported in our endeavors by the wonderful parents, families, partners, and for some of you, children on this course. And I'd like to take a moment at the outset to thank them. We are also incredibly fortunate to be able to host the graduation in such an amazing and historic venue. From the seat of French power to Napoleon's abdication to the graduation of class 24J, this site has played witness to some watershed moments in history. And it is worth noting the salamander, the symbol of Francois I that you see on the building, and also the symbol of INSEAD alumni, which we wear proudly today. And salamanders are semi-mythical hardy, tough, and can breathe fire, and I can think of no better metaphor for INSEAD students. Napoleon also provides a handy parallel. While he set forth from here to wage great battles at Ligny, Austerlitz, and Waterloo, you have done battles in the basements of Fontainebleau, the rooftops of Singapore, and on the beaches, land, and boat parties of everywhere in between. Napoleon would, of course, be rolling in his grave to see a Brit on the stage giving this speech. And it is a privilege to be giving this speech. And I want to start today really by talking about privilege. We are an extraordinarily privileged group. Regardless of your background, you have had an amazing set of opportunities and experiences that are the envy of the world. For example, Harvard MBAs or Stanford MBAs can only dream of achieving what you have, 
and in the years to come, you will need to treat them with magnanimity and with pity. <laughs> but it seems both yesterday and nearly a lifetime ago that we arrived here and met more than 400 incredibly different and slightly overwhelming characters. Whatever our own backgrounds, we met people that inspired inferiority complexes. From bankers to lawyers, to successful entrepreneurs, PhD students, and doctors, we were thrown in at the deep end. But over drinks at Lefemere, drinks in the Chateau Park, drinks in Glasgow pub, drinks in our kitchens, and drinks in each other's basements, we quickly broke down any fear of them and realized what an extraordinarily engaging and diverse set of people we had thrown a lot in with. We started upon a journey with this group, and we faced challenges together. Whether it was assault courses in the rain or tilapia production in sub-Saharan Africa, we tentatively started down a path that built us together, and one that we are only partway through today. We celebrated Culture Week, in which we wore each other's national dress and attempted each other's national dances with mixed success. We ate each other's national food, and it is a common mistake to believe that INSEAD stands for Institut Européen d'Administration des Affaires, and INSEAD students know well that it stands for I never stop eating and drinking. We have broken bread together. From Chinese hot pot to Indian curries, Brazilian brigadero, Pakistani pakoras, Arabic dates, Colombian coffee, and Nigerian jell-off, we have tried it all. INSEAD is legendary for its diversity. Everyone arrives at INSEAD a minority, and this heady mixture makes for some interesting experiences. We come from every corner of the earth. 66 different countries, we speak 48 languages. Some of you come from vast countries, and some of you come from countries so small that your presence here makes a notable difference to the population size. Some of you have lived up to your national stereotypes. Where are the Italians and the Spanish? You guys are so loud that you've given us tinnitus, and we would have it no other way. Where are the Lebanese? The academic staff have asked me to give you a quick shout out as none of the professors have ever seen you before, <laughs> despite the official attendance record saying 100%. <laughs> Some of you, though, defied your national stereotypes. I have a Japanese friend famous for missing the bus because he's not punctual. <laughs> I've met loud Scandinavians, humble Americans, and even that rarest of creatures, a friendly Frenchman. And with 66 different nationalities, I obviously can't mention everyone, but this breadth of national character uh, gives us perspective and adds to our collective view of the world. Um, but in that maelstrom of competing views, interests, and perspectives, we also found something. We found friends. We found colleagues. We found future business partners. And some of you found love. Some of you found a lot of love. <laughs> and some of you have loved on campus. You know who you are. We found people that were prepared... <laughs> we found people that were prepared to do insane trips with us. Whether it was Hong Kong, Samarkand, New York, Sofia, Sydney, Japan, or even a private island in Indonesia, we found people willing to push the limits with us, taking the highs and lows in their stride, pushing us forwards, stretching us, and ultimately changing us for the better. Travel is entwined in the INSEAD experience, and it creates deep bonds amongst us and between us. We found people with diverse career interests. Some of us targeted consulting, while others went into consulting, and a few thought about consulting. <laughs> and a tiny, tiny number amongst us decided to do something interesting with their lives. But we have all found camaraderie, and a place that we belong. I will not name them, but on the second day here, I was sat next to someone in one of the introductory lectures, and we got speaking, and they told me that they'd been living abroad for many years, and that they no longer felt at home in their home country, and that they struggled to find belonging in Europe or anywhere else for that matter. And I suspect that that is a story that resonates with many people here. Well, I hope that you have found belonging here. Everyone is a minority here, and so no one is a minority. As I think back across those differences, 
and the similarities between us, it's hard not to feel that there's something special here. It is fizzing with energy. And with this group at our back, we can accomplish anything. And not only that, we have an obligation to do so. The world is a complex place, and we face massive challenges. From conflict to climate change, pandemics, and issues that we have not yet conceived of, we will face unprecedented challenges. And I can think of no group better equipped or one with whom I would rather face those challenges. We know going forward that we have 400 plus people fighting our corner. We know exactly who we have to call when the going gets tough in the years to come. Your next battles are not in the basement of Victoire, but rather in the boardrooms and pitch meetings of the world's capitals. And those differences are going to be an ally to you. These have been halcyon days that we have spent together, and I am extraordinarily grateful for the time that we have had. We have come so far from where we started, and as we close this first chapter together, we are now no longer a seething mass of differences, but one honed business machine. We have found our rhythm, and we can pull in the same direction. We have cast aside our issues and taken what sets us apart and made it what binds us together. Those differences are our strength, and we are the class of 24J. Thank you very much. Not even going to try and top it, but there were a few things there I wish I didn't know. That's the, uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Theo. You, know, you certainly entertained your class and the audience, and we are all very grateful.